Welcome to Crime Most French, a podcast featuring crimes carried out on French soil, narrated and researched by Cedric and rudely interrupted by me, Melanie. We're the true crime podcast on the lines. Crack open Levin and let the mayhem commence. The case this week takes us to the Alps region of France. On the 5th of September 2012, very recent case, in a remote location near the Swiss border, a family of four and a cyclist are gunned down at a rest stop. Okay, so we're talking quite high profile case, aren't we? Um, well, it's recent, okay. more than high, high profile. It appeared in the news recently, mm -hmm. in fact, in January, February this year again. Right. So hot off the presses then. Pretty much. Mm. On the 5th of September 2012, a Brit called William Brett Martin, 53, ex-RAF from Sussex, owning a holiday house in the area, goes for a ride on his bicycle uh, on a forest track that he knows pretty well mm -hmm. because he's there a large part of the year. On his way, he's overtaken by another cyclist who was going much faster than him. That happens at about 3.15 p.m. Right. Then he sees a 4x4, greenish, possibly BMW. And then finally he sees a motorbike. That's all he sees on his ride. At about 3.44 p.m., on the side of the road, on a stop area located at the end of the part of the road where motor vehicles are allowed, mm -hmm. It's a dead end road. Right. He sees a small girl struggle to walk and fall over. Oh, that's never good. So he gets closer, he stops, and he sees what he thinks was a car accident involving a BMW 5 Series estate, I think, and a cyclist. Right. Seems to be an awful lot of BMWs in the area. Yeah, I guess so, <laughs> too. When he gets on the scene, he discovers that something entirely d different happened. The cyclist has been shot to death, the BMW's engine is still running, and the wheels are spinning, mm. but the car is stuck on okay. the embankment. Right. He contaminated the scene, because it was obviously a crime scene, by going into the car and switching the engine off. Good God, man. You need to spend Demise. more time watching procedurals on yes. TV. Yes. Touch nothing. It wasn't nothing. important that the engine was running, but apparently for him it was. I mean, at that point, you know, it doesn't matter if the engine burns out. Yes, he can smell burning as well. Mm. Uh, that's probably the engine. He sees a few holes in the car. And as he broke the window, he sees that the people inside also have holes in their heads. I can't believe he broke the window. <laughs> Yeah, to get in to switch mm. off the engine. And he says later on that it looked like a Hollywood film, mm. except real. So it sounds very much like it's a hit or something, doesn't it? It's yes. He moves the little girl to the safety position because she's not dead, but she's unconscious at that point. Okay, so he puts her into the recovery position yeah. with the, on the side with the yes. arm mm -hmm. and the, yeah. the legs. So again, it. contaminates the crime scene, yeah. but anyway... I, th well, I think in that case, I think we can probably get him, uh, yeah. let him off for, for trying a little to save bit, a little yeah, girl. Yeah, yeah. He drags the cyclist away from the road because he was worried that somebody might drive up the road, not see him and run him over. Uh, no, once again, that's that, that's bad. I, yeah. I mean, obviously, I mean, he probably would think the guy was still alive, possibly, or something. I don't no, no, know. I think he knew he was dead. He had several holes in the head, so um, I mean, uh, he wasn't that, likely to be alive. <laughs> At that point, you should have just got the triangle out of the back of the BMW and, and put I that I guess up. so, but again, it would have contaminated yeah. the crime scene because who knows what happened to the car. So. I guess all, uh, all logic goes out the window when you're seeing something. It's quite so horrific. And yeah, he probably wasn't Traumatising as, yeah. as that. As that yeah, yeah, he probably tried to mm. do something to help more than trying to keep the, the scene uncontaminated. Yeah. He then goes and alerts to gendarmerie, but because it's in the middle of nowhere really in the middle of nowhere. He has no signal on his phone. Mm. So he has to cycle back down the mountain. And on his way down, he meets a group of walkers who have a phone that works. And they call the gendarmerie, which arrives at 4 or 3 p.m. Okay, so we're talking handy. 20 minutes or less later. Mm -hmm. 
By 6 p.m., there are several teams from the gendarmerie on location. And there's even a helicopter hovering around to keep an eye on what's going on. Oh, right. Okay. Are they trying to see if there's still someone lurking in that, the that's, uh, That would be my guess. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. By 11 p.m., a campsite reports to the authorities that the family who was staying in the campsite had two daughters. Ah. One is missing. Right. At about midnight, the gendarmerie discovers her on the floor at the back of the car under her mum's leg. So this poor wee girl has been in the car for about eight hours. Yes, trying not to move for eight hours. Yes. Oh, bless her heart. She didn't even react when the gendarmerie came in. She probably, they were probably speaking French and she doesn't speak French. That's my assumption. So she couldn't understand what was yeah. going on. So she decided not to move even when uh, the roses were on location. Oh, poor little thing. Yes. The only reason why they found her is because the scientific uh, police had arrived and okay. they opened the car to investigate it. But they didn't expect to find someone alive in it. No. Oh, no. Now, a uh, little bit of a uh, backstory. On Wednesday, 29th of August 2012, the family leaves the UK on the 10 p.m. ferry, direction Kelly. I bet they didn't have to wait five hours. Probably not, no, because they were still in the EU at the time. <laughs> They're going to an area they know pretty well in the Alps. They've mm -hmm. been there three times, I think, before. Okay. So we're talking uh, Haute Savoir then? Yes. Mm. And they are planning to come back on the 7th of September. So they are going for just under 10 days. Right. Hang on a minute. September? Yes. They've got two kids. Should they yes, not they be in school? Yes, they should be at school probably. <laughs> yes. I suspect they should have been. Yes. Unless they're homeschooled, I don't know. I haven't read mm. anything about yeah, that. Yeah, that's very true. But you still shouldn't be taking your kids away. No, but you can homes homeschool them on the go. That's very true. So, but I, I really very, don't know. I haven't true. read anything about that. Mm -hmm. The family is composed of Sad, 50 years old, Iqbal, 47, dentist in Sweden, Sahela, 74, Iqbal's mom, who also lives in Sweden, and made the trip to come on holiday with them. Okay. Two daughters, Zainab, seven years old, and Zina, four years old. And I had flashbacks of traveling with a four-year-old sister for a thousand kilometers, which we did when I was a kid, and that was not fun. Yeah, at least uh, the kids nowadays have lots of uh, they entertainment. They have lots of entertainment, yes. yes. We had nothing, and yeah. a pukey sister. Oh, grim. <laughs> that was, I've never been so glad to be an only child. Yes, <laughs> you had the whole backseat to yourself. Yes, yes. and I wasn't car sick, so... <laughs> yes. They settled on a campsite on the edge of Lake, uh, Lake Ensi, which is at the Swiss border. Okay. It's the third time they go to that specific campsite. Stick Strangely, with what you know, eh? Hmm? Stick with what you know. Yeah, well, if you find a nice place, we can go back. Oh, not? yeah. You don't yeah. have to change every time. D definitely. Strangely, despite having booked for the whole week in that campsite, uh -huh. after two days on the 3rd of September, they pick up the caravan and move to another campsite 2.6 kilometers away. Oh, right, okay. Their motivation to move isn't explained, and nobody knows why. There are rumors that say that Sad was seen in an animated discussion with a guy in a suit right. for the move. But at the same time, it's not clear where that happened. Some people put it at the first campsite, some people put it at the second campsite. Okay. But it could just be that simply that the people who were kind of like birth next or were you know, obnoxious or they yeah, didn't I like guess them so. or something. I guess so. So something definitely happened, but nobody knows what it is. Yeah. They just moved just down the road. Uh, presumably in that area, there would be campsites aplenty, so. Probably. I've never been around Lake, Lake NC, but yeah, possibly mm. there might be. Each of the family victims, parents and grandmother, mm -hmm. received two bullets in the head. Right. Sad, got shot five times in total. Okay. So two in the head, three in uh, the chest. So, I mean, that's definitely a overkill at that point. It's certainly not an accident. No. Um, but for him, it is a bit overkill. Even mm. for them, I guess, two bullets in the head is a bit much. Yeah. And one should be enough. Zainab, the eldest daughter, was shot in the shoulder and then violently hit on the head with the uh, hand bit of the uh, handgun. Oh, the butt of the gun. Yeah. So she was pistol whipped. Yes. Mm, right. She's transported to the nearest hospital in Grenoble as soon as possible. Okay. She has a skull fracture and a bullet wound. Uh-huh. 
the hospital place her in an artificial coma and operate many times okay. on her. And she does wake up on the 9th of September. Oh, that's good. So she survived. Excellent. Zina, the youngest one, isn't harmed. Mm. Probably traumatized, but not harmed. Oh, well, at least they, they have each other, you know. Yes. Well, they have an extended family as well. They have uncles and yeah. cousins. and So she, they won't be... I don't know where they are now because no, I mean, they... As far as I remember, they were moved um, away from the area where they used to live. Mm. And the police didn't disclose where they went. So nobody good. really knows where they are right now. Well, that's good. That's good. So, but and, most uh, likely with some family, yeah. I would assume. Oh, well, it could be, but, but, but at least they, you know, they have each other. They've had this awful shared experience, but, you know. Yes. You have to try and make the best of a bad situation. I yeah. guess so. In the 70s, the Al-Hili family, the victims, mm -hmm. are part of the Iraq elite. Okay. They own several su successful factories, but the arrival of Saddam Hussein in 71 mm -hmm. completely changes things. Yeah. The Basque Party tries to take power and seize everything that has value. Yes. The head of the family at the time is Kadim. He's the dad. He's um, a patriarch. Sad, Sad's dad. Yeah. And he sees his brother being arrested and tortured. So right. at that point, they don't want to stay. So they yeah, leave that's... absolutely everything, take <laughs> nothing, and they move to Lebanon. I mean, that's real um, incentive to leave, isn't it, when oh, your yeah. family are getting tortured? Uh, no tortured. question that. As soon as it happens, it's just yeah. pack your suitcase and go. <laughs> yeah. and you deal with it later. <laughs> just drop and leave. Yeah. But they're found in Lebanon. Right. And the new Iraqi government, Saddam's government, summons them back to Iraq. Oh. And at that point, they say, uh-uh, Lebanon is not far enough. They move to the UK. Yeah. Kadim immigrates with his two sons, Saad and Zaid. Right. But he abandoned everything in Iraq. Didn't take ever, n n they take, took nothing with them. No. No liquidating the assets and stuff. Yeah. Just Later on, assets. after the Iraqi war, uh, in 2003-2004, the two brothers, Saad and Zaid, mm -hmm. went back to Iraq to cr try to reclaim some of their positions, like their house, for example. Yeah. They had a big house that they abandoned. Um, I don't know if that was too successful. It's I it wasn't really so. newspapers because nobody cared about that. I really wouldn't have thought so. But mm. who knows? In 1984, they moved from London to Surrey and they buy a house there for £60,000. Wow. The house is estimated at over a million in 2011 when Kadim dies. Ah, so the old man died then. The old man dies right. in 2011. It's also in some murky circumstances. He dies in Malaga. You had lots of houses all over the place. So you had at least one in Surrey, one in Malaga, one in Gironde. Um, so I think he had one in Lebanon. He had houses all over the place. He, he coming to the UK with he, nothing. With nothing he, yeah. he managed to build up a massive, obviously. Yes. Yeah, ma managed here. to remake some of his money, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. But didn't get anything from Iraq because it was all seized. No. So he was obviously good at business or had good relations with people who had money. I don't know. Oh, yeah. I have no details about how he made his money again. But but you certainly wasn't uh, coming across here, not taking our jobs, living off of benefits. He wasn't. No, <laughs> he no, wasn't no. there. He made lots of money. Yeah, well, that's good. Zaid trained as an accountant, so that's the eldest brother, mm -hmm. and he's the financial officer of the Burhill Book Group. Okay. Apparently, they run golf courses and estates all over the okay, place. Okay. Sad, the younger of the two, is more of an engineer. He trains and is as an engineer. Mm -hmm. He also founds his tech company in 2001. Right. He works for, on various projects. One of them was parts of the inside of the Airbus 380. Okay. So they're both, uh, they're both the sons are very uh, white-collar jobs, kind of successful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. In 2012, he works for, for Surrey Satellite Technology. It's a company specialized in microsatellites. It's all civilian. There's no military application, but right. they, they work on satellites. Okay, so that wouldn't be instantly uh, an idea for the police to start looking into kind of like why such a senseless uh, scene was found. Mm, they do investigate it quite a long time. Okay. They think that, and we're getting ahead of ourselves here, but okay. they think for a long time that industrial espionage is the reason for the murders. Okay. But the company 
just denies it because they're not working on the military projects. Mm. They're working on nothing secret. They're just making small satellites for people. Well, I was going to say, there's so. just so many satellites. There's just so much stuff circling the uh, Yeah, the so there's really nothing yeah. special that would justify killing people. Yeah. But it, it is one of the, the areas of instigations mm. that uh, the police follow, but to, right. to get to nowhere. Iqbal met Saad in 2003 in Dubai. Before that, she lived in the U.S. for a while, uh, three, four years as far as I remember, where she met through Iraqi friends a guy called James Thompson, who was born in 1952. Very, very much older than her. I was going to say, it's quite a big diff- age difference. Yeah, something like 20 years, so yeah. Quite, quite, well, that's generational. Quite a bit. <laughs> it's a generation, yeah. Mm. They get married, but they divorce in 2001. Oh, right, okay. Strangely, James dies of a heart attack, officially, on the 5th of September, exactly the same day the whole family is killed. That is spooky. It is kind of spooky. The, there's no autopsy performed, because even though the French authorities hearing about that requested it, yeah. the FBI approved it, yeah. the family denied uh, it. Ultimately, the family have the final say, yeah. don't they? Yeah. Why they denied it, I just don't know. Because we don't know for sure what he died of. Well, I don't know. I mean... Yeah. A lot of people, you know, with their faiths and stuff, they, they're very funny about what happens to a cadaver after it's, you know, yeah, laid to rest. So I guess so. I'm not going to judge. But there's a murder but, investigation you know. involved. You, want, you would want yeah. to help, obviously. They, they, they refuse, so... They're, I mean, it's it's highly, highly unlikely, surely. I mean, I think just a horrible we coincidence. Know. We can't know. Well, he had Iraqi connections. Okay. It's an Iraqi family. It was just at the end of the war in Iraq, mm. so the French authorities said well, there might be something there. But he no, was, we, we don't know. but but he was older, and he was older. Yeah, we don't know what kind of. Did he smoke? Did he was he, he a big drinker? No, he. I think he used to, but didn't at the time he was dead. Right. Um, I think he used to smoke uh, quite a lot. Ah, not see, drink I mean, as far as I remember, but smoke quite a lot. Right. You just. I mean, you just don't but, know. But yeah. Yeah. The last vi- victim, the cyclist, was called Sylvain Mollier. Okay. He was 45. He was a local. He worked at a local factory. At the time, he was on paternity leave. He requested a three-year paternity leave. Three-year so paternity leave? Yeah. So he was a stay-at-home dad then? It doesn't have to be. Um, he just was on paternity leave. Okay. His wife could also have been on maternity leave. <laughs> three years, though. Yeah, uh, I don't know if it's normal. I know in Norway, two years normal. Um, three years here might be. I really don't know. He was shot seven times. So he had the most bullets. He has him. the most holes, yes. Mm. Um, not much more is known about him. Um, he has a girlfriend-to-be wife. Um, he had two kids with her. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's divorced. Um, and his wife's family doesn't like him. They don't want him... Married to her. Oh, right, okay. That's pretty much all we know about him. Is it is it a case of, do they not like him that much? that uh, They would have to seriously dislike him to have a hit on him, I but so. uh, who knows? It, it is also something the police investigated. I mean, currently at the moment, I just don't know what's going on. You just don't know who the, no. the intended victim is. Is it the guy in the bike or is it the people in the car? No, we don't know at the moment. Yeah. So an inquiry starts. Um, in fact, there's two inquiries. There's one in France. They split the events into two. Mm-hmm. There's the murders and the attempted murders. So right. they investi- se- investigated separately by two right. different yeah. So, th- so the, what happens to the kids and yeah. what happens to the adults? Yeah. Are, are they over, the two cases overlap a lot. So the two judges tend to work together. Okay. They reach out to the UK authorities because they want to know about the family. Mm-hmm. And in particular, they want the search, the house searched. Right. Because they expect to find things. One thing they found in France was in the caravan, there were a whole bunch of hard drives with tons of personal documents or family documents, Mm -hmm. but also a lot of work documents. And according to the police, some of these documents Sad should not have had access to. Right. So they are thinking maybe he was there to sell documents Maybe he had more at home. Maybe there will be contacts at home, something to show why he was there with all those documents. Uh, So hence the reason that they went down that whole industrial espionage route. But it could could have been simply, as I I know that I'm living with an uh, uh, alcoholic, a workaholic, and I know that his father's a workaholic. 
they do, they wouldn't go on holiday without. Uh, well, taking. that's the thing. What, what, the fact that they had work documents is not entirely surprising. Yes, he was probably mm. planning to work. If you expect some bad weather, yeah, you in take some work to do. Yeah. Um, and when I was on holiday, when I was a kid with my parents, my dad would work in the morning, pretty much every morning. Yeah. And I've worked during holidays as well. Yes, yes. So, yes. so it, that's not really surprising. What no. what surprised the, the gendarmerie was the documents that he wasn't supposed to have access to. But again, it was probably a small company. Mm. In small companies, the security is garbage. It could be that he just grabbed the whole yeah, he just did three a ma- structures of documents yeah, because his were in there, and he grabbed a whole lot of things. He that, just did a massive data dump yeah, and didn't m- sift through it. He shouldn't have access to, yeah. but there was no restriction to access mm. those documents, yeah. so he just took everything and mm. might have absolutely no, nothing to do with the case. Yeah. It's very possible. It's hard. It's impossible to know, really. Mm. As far as I know, there's been no investigation in the company to find out how he got these documents out. Or at least it hasn't been published by the, the authorities, so we don't know if it has been. No, it sounds like, as you say, a small company who, has, but sm- who have very no bad security. No small company has good security. They yeah. don't have time for that. They just rely on people being honest and yeah. not making mistakes, and yeah. sometimes they make mistakes. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So when I was working in small companies, I had access to all the accounting documents, which yeah. I shouldn't have seen, but mm. I could if I wanted to. There's just no security. Yeah. So, eh, could happen. In the meantime, the prosecutor the guy in charge of the mm-hmm. uh, inquiry and that later the trial, decides to talk to the press. So he has press conferences regularly, <sighs> which is and not normal, no. but allowed, apparently, according to the law who was changed in the early, early 2000s. It's allowed to do that. Yeah. Um, but he says it's to avoid rumors and accusations. So he wants people to know what's going on so that there's no rumor mill going around and so, making things harder for them. So you've got very much the, the same case as the... Uh, the little uh, Gregory case, uh, Pity Greg- Gregory. He was sh- he was having. Oh, he was in the news all the time. He, showboating. He yeah, he wanted to be in the news. Yeah. I don't know if that prosecutor really wanted to be in the news, mm. but he decided he, to be. To he, he to thought it was a easier. necessary evil, yeah. certainly. Yeah, the two daughters are questioned. Obviously, Zina, the youngest, is barely questioned. She's asked a couple of questions, and then she's sent to the UK. Well, I mean, because she was hiding. So well, she, she was hiding and she was four. So yeah. they decided whatever she says is going to be unreliable. Mm. So there's no point. All she says is from where she was hiding on the floor of the car, she could only hear noises. So she has no idea what happened. Right. Zainab, the only witness of the murder at that point, mm. can't tell much to the authorities either. She confirms, though, that there was only one person involved in the shooting. Right. So we're looking for a single shooter, not right. the team. No. A single That's, shooter well, with multiple clips, multiple Yeah, bullets. because there were 25 bullet casings found on location. Yeah. So um, clearly, yes. Um, lots and of, it's not an assault rifle. I mean, no, no such thing No, the gun was a so. Luger P06 Parabellum, right. um, which was a gun involved, used by the Swiss Army for 60 years or so from the early 20th century to the 60s. Mm. So there would have been thousands and thousands and thousands of them around. So it's nothing special, but it's mm. a bit surprising because it's, a, it's now a collection gun. So yeah. a hit with a collection gun is weird because yeah. it's not the best gun you would want to no, use. They, they were known for getting stuck and mm. not Jammed. very good at aiming. And it's a gun that was developed 100 years ago, so it, that's the technology yeah. of the time. It wasn't good. Very much the gun of a stormtrooper. Yes. So yeah. why you use that to kill people is weird. Mm-hmm. And here was me thinking the Swiss Army only used Swiss Army knives to protect <laughs> themselves. No, the Swiss Army is totally paranoid about being invaded. Mm. Um, the Swiss are crazy about not getting invaded by France or Germany. Mm. I think they've only been invaded once by France. In, in, their, in, their in all history. fairness, um, France and Germany have done their fair share of uh, striding across Europe. Well, they, they've invaded each other every 40 or 50 years for a long time, but uh, then they only invaded uh, Switzerland once. But the Swiss were totally paranoid about it. But I mean, the, uh, the I mean, you obviously you had Hitler, but you had also Napoleon striding yeah. <laughs> through Europe, yes, yeah, gobbling yeah, yeah. things up. Yeah. All men in Switzerland are requested to. Uh, mm-hmm conscripted yes uh, do their national two service, years they do national service yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. and they are encouraged to keep their weapons afterwards that's crazy handguns and rifles 
So there's millions of guns in Switzerland. Every single guy has yeah. at least a gun, many of them several, That's crazy. in case it's needed, mm. which is nuts. There's more guns per capita in Switzerland than in the US, but no yeah. murders. Well, they're not like the Israelis where uh, the women also are encouraged. No, as far as I know, no. It's just the men. Well, at least not traditionally. I don't mm. know if they do it now, but yeah, it's mainly men. But also the one of the things they did to avoid being invaded is all the bridges getting into Switzerland were ready to be blown up at any point so that they would stop any kind of invasion, which is crazy. That's just paranoid nutsness. And yeah, well, that's, I guess, one way of doing it because yeah. you can't go down mountains with a tank. So if somebody tried to invade, the bridges would be blown yeah. up. But it also means you can't get any aid in or... Oh, yeah, well, that's a different problem. You fix the immediate problem that's and then you see what happens next. Short-term visionism yeah. is not good. Yeah. Um, apparently, officially, they removed all the explosives in the early 2000s. So it's no longer the case, <laughs> but it was the case for a long time. Yeah. They also have bases in mountains that nobody knows where they yeah, are. There's course. bunkers all over the of place as well. Switzerland is a nuts country. Switzerland is very much shrouded in secrecy and money and chocolate. And guns, yes. So, yeah, so that, that, that gun that was used for the murders would have been extremely common in the area. Mm. They would have crossed the border fairly easily yeah. because we are very close. We're a few kilometers from the border. So there would have been tons of those yeah. in, uh, everywhere. And pretty so much impossible to trace. It doesn't narrow down anything. No. It doesn't help knowing what that was. So as men we mentioned, there were 25 bullets found on, uh, in people and um, in cases. the embankments as well because some of them were missed. So, but I'm presuming the the shell casings obviously have the uh, the rifling on the. Uh, yeah, but that doesn't really help no. because the if they not do a gun that was known and if they do eventually find it, yeah. they would be able all, to. All it showed is that it was only one gun. Yes. That's it. That, 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 that's all they know yeah. about it. But also, the fact that there were 25 bullets means that there were eight in the clip mm. per clip. So three clips. Three clips mm -hmm. plus one in the gun. Yeah. So that guy had to reload twice. Yeah. to shoot people. That's so crazy. he was constantly shooting yeah. and reloading. It must have been quite proficient. Well, that, that's one of the things that directed inquiries towards uh, a professional hit because you need to have a bit of training to, to be able yeah. to just shoot, 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 reload, shoot, 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 reload, shoot, shoot, shoot. But I'm sure a professional would have but, taken a much better gun. But, yeah, exactly. <laughs> a professional would have used a new gun that has never been used. Yeah. And would have used a gun that's very reliable because you don't want suddenly your gun not working when you're in the middle of killing people. Mm. So it makes no sense, the gun that was used. It, it, mm. Nobody can explain why that gun was used. No. Maybe it was opportunity, that's what was available, but in that case it's not no. professional. Yeah. Um, no, which makes it, things even more complicated. If it's not yeah. a professional that killed the, the family and the cyclist, who would have killed these people? Mm. Crazy. So don't know. Also, what's strange is that he hit the girl, Zinab, on the head because he was out of bullet, mm. but didn't finish the job. So was he disturbed by someone? Yeah. In which case, someone might know something. Don't know. Oh, you would think if there was kids involved, so they would come forward. I well, would think so, but nobody did. So it's not clear why he didn't kill the, the girl. Yeah. Why didn't he finish it? I mean, I don't know how to tell you this, but... I mean, we've got no kids, but if I found out you'd killed somebody and you'd attempted to kill uh, a child, I'd be on foot running to the gendarmes so fast. Okay. The biker that the cyclist saw mm -hmm. was investigated. The biker shouldn't have been there because the road wasn't allowed for uh, right. motor vehicles. Okay, okay for... for Okay for cyclists, okay for pedestrians, yeah. but not motor vehicles. Right. Um, the road continues paved for a kilometer or so after the sign that says right. don't go further. Mm -hmm. And then it's just a track. So we're talking white tracks. At that point, it would be not, it's not even a white track. It's a forest track. Mm. It would have been a muddy track. Right. But somebody on the bike was there coming down okay. that road. The gendarmerie makes a photo of it which they only release a year later. They don't release it straight Why away. It Why sit on it for a year? I think they were hoping to find who it was and have that to check. And then when it didn't happen, they released it so that someone might recognize that but person. Goodness, but you know, people's memories fade. Yeah, totally. But if it's distinctive enough, it would still work. Hmm. There were three witnesses in total for the, the biker. There was the cyclist, the British cyclist. Mm-hmm. 
there was a forest guard and there was a tourist, I think, who all saw the biker and they all contributed to the photo fit. Right. So it's not a single person who saw, saw that guy. In 2014, Eric Davoisou, who is a cop, is identified as the biker. So we're talking three years later? Yeah. Okay. He's identified because he owns a helmet, which is the same helmet that's been described by the witnesses, which is apparently extremely distinctive. Mm -hmm. There's only 8,000 ever made. What's distinctive about it? It opens sideways. Right. So, so it isn't kind of, entirely closed down the bottom of the face. Yeah, the, the sides kind of move uh, like in um, Total Recall. Uh, <laughs> they move sideways to, so you can take your head out and right. when you back it, you kind of close it around your chin. So it's kind of like a deer stalker, but it doesn't tie underneath your face. Yeah, it doesn't work the same way as a, no. uh, a deer stalker. No. It's, it's like uh, rotates around. It's apparently it's very distinctive. Right. No, I've never seen anything like that. No. Um, he's arrested and questioned, but he's released a few days later when his DNA doesn't match any of the two non-family profiles found on the car. Okay. But, I mean, anybody could have touched that car at any time. They only found two profiles on the car. Mm. Not many people did. No. But he doesn't match, so he's let go. Okay. Unfortunately for, for, unfortunately for him, the information is leaked out and he's fired from his job. So the oh. police fires him. It's not entirely just because of... He's suspected it's also because when they investigated him, they found a few things that worried the police. So he had, for example, lots of illegal guns. Oh, right, okay. Um, there was a few other things that they found about him, and it, the police said, no, we don't want any right, of those. Okay, that just gave them leverage. Yeah, so mm. they, they fired him, so he lost his job. In 2015, after checking 4,000 uh, phone location records, mm -hmm. the gendarmerie finds the real biker. It's a local CEO. Okay. He's well known in the area. He's above reproach. Nobody said that he's done anything illegal in his life. Yeah, because CEOs aren't kind of like linked to being psychos at all. <laughs> well, they kind of are, but it's, yeah, exactly. it's kind of a leap to make him a murderer. Uh, no, but... Uh, but apparently he was honest. There was really nothing. No, nobody had anything bad to say about him. Yeah, but, but as you know, psychopaths and CEOs uh, oh, share the same yes. traits. yeah, yeah. yeah. He was there illegally on his bike, as we said. Mm -hmm. And his explanation was that he was there to upsell. So he did some upselling in, uh, in the mountains. Okay. And he was on his way down uh, from the location he did it. He just parked too close. I uh, parked way more than too close. Yeah. He actually went on the road he wasn't allowed on. But mm. that, that's a small thing anyway. Okay. The last time the gendarmerie discussed uh, the biker before this year, they hadn't finished their inquiries yet. So they said they couldn't rule him out mm -hmm. at that point. Then there's the 4x4, which wasn't so investigated, but unfortunately there was very, very little to go on. This was the second BM, possible BMW. Yeah. Yes, it's mm -hmm. possibly an X5 and it's possibly green. The right. one thing that the witnesses are agree agreeing on is the steering wheel was on the right, so it was a UK car. Yeah. That's the one thing. So that's why they have suddenly thought, well, maybe the family are the... Uh the yes, target. because what they thought originally before they identified who the biker was many years later was that it was a two people hit. Ah, the so biker, the car and the bike were connected. The biker did the murdering yeah. and the X5 was like for cover. Okay. So that's why they went both down at roughly the same time. So that's what they had assumed the, the story was. Uh -huh. And that's why they thought it was a professional hit because to have two people doing the murdering requires a lot more logistics and connections than just hiring one guy. Mm. There's actually planning going in, into that. Yeah. But once they had found the actual biker... There was no connection at all. There was no connection, connection between the biker and the car. No. The car is never identified, so nobody knows who that person is. Nobody ever came forward. Totally it's, unknown. It's very much a, a cheap kind of like a Chelsea tractor. I'm sure there are dozens and dozens. And oh, there's probably thousands just in yeah. London. Yeah. So it, it's... Needle it's, in the yeah, it's yeah. useless. Mm. It's not information. It's just noise at that yeah. point. But somebody should have come forward and nobody Said did. it was us. Exactly. We were there. Yes. Yeah. On holiday or whatever. Yeah. In 2014, an ex-legionnaire legionnaire in France mm -hmm. um, committed suicide, suicide. He had been questioned in the early stages of the inquiry, but then he was ruled out as a possible murderer. And 
in the letter he left, he says that being accused of being a murderer is just too much for him and therefore he can't live anymore. That's all I had for a long time. And then I found out that that was the girlfriend's brother, the cyclist's girlfriend's brother. So there was a direct connection between him and the cyclist being killed. Mm. And that's probably why they investigated him. Because otherwise, yeah. it's kind of weird. There's it a local, does seem a bit random. Yeah, there's a local <laughs> guy who used to be in the Legion. Yeah, okay, but that doesn't make him a murderer. Why investigate him? That's because he's just one degree of separation from yeah. one of the victims. So once again, have we got uh, the father, the soon-to-be father-in-law putting pressure on the son to, no, we can't let your sister marry this man. Yes, that's what they thought yeah. for a while. But then when they looked into him, they had mm, nothing. No. So that's why they let him go. They didn't find anything. He had a few guns, mm. um, but they were legal. And he wasn't known for being violent or anything. So mm. they just let him go and then he committed suicide. So we're, we're basically penduluming across the, the is it the biker? Is it the family? Is it the biker? Is it the family? Is it the, you know, it's just, it's it's very, very confusing. Just... Yes. Utterly senseless. Utterly, utterly yes. senseless. Yes. The gendarmerie goes through a number of suspects over the years. In 2017, for example, as part of a completely unrelated inquiry, they questioned a South African man who was a suspect in a illegal arms trafficking thing. Okay. One of the things he would have dealt in is collections, collection guns. And the one that was used for the murder would have been a collection gun. So they thought, oh, he could have known and dealt in that yeah. gun. They investigate him for the murders, but they can't connect him to, to no. that. I mean, he might have sold someone a gun, but surely he wouldn't have actually... Yes, but their thinking was he has access to those. Yes. So he could have used one of those. He, he could have told them who he sold them to. Because uh, there's no way he would have killed. Oh, he could have, but Five when they looked into it... they didn't know. No, uh, just... Uh, it didn't seem likely, so mm. no, they gave that, gave up on that. They also questioned a known um, serial killer, who they thought might be the guy. Um, we'll probably talk about him one day. It's a very famous case from the early two thousands. Again, no, it's called Lande. Um Again, they can't connect him to to the murder. He wasn't there at the time. Okay. It's just no, it's a dead dead end. They investigate. A group in the French Secret Services as well, who was rumored to have connections to a, a Mason Lodge and was rumored to have organized murders, at least two. At the time, it was only rumor, but it happens a few years ago, a few years later, that it turned out to be true. Right. They, there was a group within the Secret Services that had links to the Masons that had been committing murders for the Masons. Okay, this is now turning into QAnon. But they couldn't connect any of that to that murder. Are we so, talking lizard Illuminati time? <laughs> well, not necessarily. Just Mason is just a club, really. Yes. Nothing more. But they obviously had beefs against some people and some had connections mm. to that group and they did the murdering for them, but whatever. It was just, um, just that geographically... It's a completely different story. It geographically happened to be close yeah. to... Yes, that, yeah. that's about it. Um, they couldn't connect it to, the, to the, these no. murders. On the 22nd of January 2022, so this year, and that's why the story came back in the news, mm. the gendarmerie arrest the biker again ah. to clarify some of his activities and some of his time at the time of the murders, mm -hmm. he's freed the next day. No, they seem so they to be happy with what the, he told the, yeah. told, told the gendarmerie. He was somewhere else, I guess. Yeah, he yeah. could prove it. And therefore, they release him again. So Nothing. people were hopeful that that was the end of the, yeah. the case and they would find who it was. And in fact, no. Nah. Okay. In the meantime, there's an inquiry in the UK. Mm -hmm. The family house is searched. During the search, there's a, a bomb scare because <laughs> according to some of the cops that were in the house, they found some chemicals that they thought could be used to make a bomb, which to me is bullshit because pretty much anything can be. Oh, that just smells of um, they've got brown skin syndrome. Oh, they're brown, they know how to make gun, oh, uh, yes. bombs, yeah, yeah, probably. Oh, they're, they're great friends with uh, Sadarm. 
Yes. Mm. So they called the bomb squad. The whole area is evacuated. They searched the house and the bomb squad said, nah, there's nothing in there. Yeah, we've got weed killer in the house. Does that mean weed yeah, killer exactly. and bleach? We have weed killer and sugar. Yeah. Surely we can make bombs. Yeah. So, yeah, no, that was Nonsense. bullshit. There was nothing there. Nonsense. They confiscate tons of documents mm. in the house. As far as I know, nothing came out of them. Right. They didn't find anything useful. The main lead for the UK side of the inquir- inquiry was Zaid, Saad's brother. Uh, the older brother. The older brother, because mm. they had a, a fallout over the inheritance from the dad. Ah, uh, yeah, that's because uh, like, that happened quite kind of like recently, didn't yes, it? Yes, it was 2011. Yeah. So that was about a year earlier. Okay. Oh, yeah, but these things are so common, though. Yeah, and there's some dodgy stuff. There's a dodgy wheel, for example. There's two wheels that seem to be both valid, and nobody knows which one is the one that should be considered. One gives everything to one of the kids. The other one splits between the two kids. Right. But I'm taking it uh, the older brother wasn't in one of the wheels. Yeah, uh, yeah. exactly. Zaid accuses Saad of having convinced their dad to change the wheel so Saad would get everything. And he's living in the family house when Zaid is living in a flat. Oh, God. Uh, there's a whole bunch of things. And because there's so many houses, there's probably millions of euros of inheritance yeah. to get your hands on. So it creates some bad blood between the two brothers. Yeah, I mean, but that's so common, for goodness sake. It is very common. Zaid denies everything, but he's under investigation from 2012 to 2018. Oh, that's a long time. That's many years of being called regularly to the police station to answer questions and have your house searched and everything. That seems lunacy to me that he would have a hit on his brother in another country. Just his brother who who went on holiday just at the drop of a hat. Tons of inconsistent things in that case for the brother to be the reason for the the murders. Yeah, no, that that doesn't make much sense. In 2018, the police officially releases a statement saying that he's no longer... A potential murderer. Yeah. But they've taken too long to do that. Though. It took them six years. Yeah, I mean, that's... That's a long time. That poor guy. Yes. Another lead was industrial espionage, as we mentioned, mm-hmm. um, mainly because their the company Sad was working for was dealing in high-tech stuff, but really there was nothing there. No. So so that, that, that goes nowhere So again. basically all leads go nowhere. So far, all, all the leads go, go nowhere, yes. And that's pretty much the end of the case. Nothing else has happened since. So it's unresolved and pretty opaque. No, mm-hmm. n- nothing really makes sense in that story. There did, has we find, been... did, did we find out why he had so many of his personal documents with him? No. No, because he's the only person who can say it. He's the only person who can say why he had those documents and he's dead. There were some mistakes made during the, the inquiries. Mm. For example, one of them is... For a long time on the French side, the main avenue of investigation was a professional hit. Mm -hmm. One of the clues for that was the passports for the whole family were missing. So they thought it's either been taken by the the killer as proof Uh or as a trophy, if it wasn't a professional killer. Mm. But it turned out that a year later, they found them in the pocket of uh, Sad's jacket. So they've been in the pocket of the dude the whole time. Nobody Smart. found them. Oh, that's ridiculous. That's utterly ridiculous. Oh, so chain of command has uh, completely fallen to bits there. Uh, I, I don't know what happened, but that, that's ridiculous that a nobody even thought of the, looking. Uh, clearly, the uh, obviously the forensics thought uh, the, the coppers were going to do it and the coppers obviously thought the forensics <laughs> possibly, were going to do it. Possibly, oh, but that, 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 that's ridiculous. Oh, yes, and they spent ridiculous. a lot of time investigating mm. it as a professional hit yeah, before, yeah. because of that. Definitely. When, Definitely. in fact, there was no reason to. Yeah. Another example is it took eight hours, as we mentioned, for the, the youngest daughter, Zina, to be found yeah. in the car. And the reason for that is that the gendarmerie was waiting for the scientific police to arrive. Ah. They they, had called, were they coming from Paris or something? Yes, the, yeah. the gendarmerie had called their own scientific police, which is located in Paris. So they had uh-huh. to find the people on call, yeah, they had yeah, to pack, yeah. and they had to drive mm-hmm. down to the Alps, of and that course, took eight hours. Yeah. When, in fact, the police, so not the gendarmerie, the police, yeah. has their main scientific police center in Lyon, two hours away. Oh, God. That's the, the famous um, center that we talked about before, the first scientific police in the world. Mm-hmm. That still exists, and it was nearby. But because that was police and it was investigated by the gendarmerie, which is military, they never talked to the police. 
So they wasted eight hours mm-hmm. waiting around the car, looking mm-hmm. at the car when they could have gone and found the found Zina in the car. So there's been a few mistakes yeah. made along the way. I think probably with an inquiry this this large, you can see that there would be, and and it's unsolved. There would be yeah, huge, some, huge errors. Yeah, some are really stupid. Yeah, it's hard to understand how many people. There would have been dozens of people involved. Why would they make that mistake? Mm. They would have known about the Santo Antonio. They just yeah. decided not to talk to call them. Why? Yes, That's that, really that, stupid. Yeah, that feels political. Rather. That feels political, yeah. yes. Oh, it feels like the army doesn't talk to the police because yeah. they don't like them. Uh, wh- whichever way, it, it was really stupid. Mm. They could have done things much, much, much better. Yeah. But anyway. Nothing in this case really makes any sense. No. And nothing connects correctly. No. So, I have tons of questions. One of them is, why was a dead cyclist ruled out as the target so early in the investigation. It's like the next day they decided, no, it's not him. Why would it not be him? Mm. He had the most bullets in him. He it? had the most bullets mm. in, his, in his body. He also was on the bicycle, so he couldn't have moved very fast. No. If he was the target, why wait until he stops? Mm. It's easy to shoot somebody on the bicycle. Mm-hmm. Was this one of his regular routes? Well, no. Um, he had regular routes, but that wasn't one of those. This route was suggested by his future, who never was, uh, father-in-law. <laughs> right, okay. The one who doesn't like him. Yeah. Who mentioned to him that even though the route is not very interesting from the cycling point of view, there are some nice places to, to stop. and. Now that feels very suspicious. It feels a bit suspicious. Um, but they decided that it wasn't... It wasn't suspicious. <laughs> yeah, um, so who knows. Also, because he's not moving very fast, why would the family stop if there was a cy- dead cyclist? Yeah. It's not like he suddenly appeared. Yeah, you see somebody dead on your... Exactly. Yeah, you don't get out and have an invest. You don't... Maybe a quick rubber neck if you're one of these people that like rubber necking, but you exactly. would leave. Exactly. The when the the gendarme was questioned about the order of the killings, they said that they scientifically can't say mm. what the order was, but their idea is Sad Zainab, the eldest daughter, mm-hmm. and the cyclist were together in front of a sign that was showing forest tracks. Right, and that's when they started being shot at. Okay, the cyclist tried to escape. Mm-hmm. Uh, Sad uh, told Zina to get into the car. He ran to the car. Mm -hmm. As he was doing so, he was shot. He still managed to get into the car, put it in reverse. And then have the wheels spinning. Reversed into the embankment and got stuck. Mm. Then the shooter went to the cyclist, shot him, and then went to the car and shot everybody in the car to bullet each. Okay. That's what they think happened. There's nothing to prove it. No. There's no witness, no nothing, yeah. so they can't be sure. But if that's the case, it still doesn't mean that we know who was the target no. because they were all shot at at the same yeah. time. Somebody was in the wrong place at the wrong time, but we just don't know who. Exactly. Mm. The fact that the cyclist was on the bicycle also means that he would have heard shots being mm. fired. Yeah. So he wouldn't have come near. No. If you hear he shots, would have instantly like, stopped. even if you assume it's hunters, yeah. you turn and go back. Oh, yeah, yeah. So he didn't. Mm. That means that the family wasn't shot first. Mm. And if the family was there and the cyclist wasn't dead yet when they arrived, mm. why would it be the family as the target? It's obviously the cyclist. We don't know. Also, it is known that the Al Healy family decided to go on the drive on that morning. So it wasn't planned. Mm. Nobody would know in advance no. where they went. So to target them specifically, you would have to either follow them yeah. the whole time or be super lucky like odds or even sing high yeah. numbers that you happen to be there yeah. and they decided to stop on that uh, road as well so and, and also following somebody on a single whole track. day yeah, because that's, single track loan that yeah. that was probably road. at about clo- short, shortly before quarter to four in the yeah, afternoon in the mid-afternoon they had been going around all day yeah no that's that doesn't sound like. No, it doesn't sound plausible. No. Presumably they'd stopped. I mean, they've got two wee kids. Oh, they would have stopped many times. They yes. would have had lunch. They would yeah. have 
done lots of things and, and yeah. stretching the leg breaks exactly yeah, yeah following them the whole day to no. kill them makes absolutely no, no sense. sense it's no, no, not no. possible no. I'm not buying the hit from the... the but that's still the officially the main area of uh, just of investigation. They now kind of rule that the brother, although on the French side they haven't completely, but they still think that it's a hit. Yeah. And they just can't explain it, but it makes absolutely no sense. Mm. I think it doesn't help when there's kind of like two law enforce, two different law enforcements, essentially, um, investigating the same crime. Oh, no, it's only in gendarmerie. There's, the police is not involved at no, all. No, no, I don't mean the police. I mean the fact oh, in that French the, 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 and the French and the, the British. on the other side, yes. Mm. Yeah, that's true. Um, another thing is, why use that gun? Yeah. That makes absolutely no, no sense. sense. Why use a gun no. which is old, which is known for not working very well, mm. not being precise, yeah. for a hit? No. No professional hitman no. would ever do that. No. So it is weird that that gun was used. Mm. Also, the number of bullets is crazy. Mm. 25 bullets, three clips. Whoever shot them was expecting to have to shoot a lot. Yeah. Hitmen, I don't think, would plan mm. to kill lots of people. They no. would have a plan to kill as few people as possible. Yes. Because well, the, the more people you shoot, the more traces you leave. Exactly. That makes no sense. No. You make sure that whoever is your target is alone when yeah. you kill them. You don't do it when a whole, bunch, a whole family is nearby. No, no, no. That doesn't make any sense. No. So it's kind of weird that somebody was planning to kill so uh, to mm. shoot so many times, <laughs> yeah. but not a professional. No. So one of the idea the French um, authorities had was that it was a crazy guy who just happened to wait for somebody to stop and shoot them. But yeah. again, why? Well, uh, you can't uh, rationalize something yeah, that's crazy. It's very isolated. That's the thing. That very few people would come every day. Why would you do that? If you want to kill people, go where people are. Don't go where nobody is. None of this just makes... None of it makes sense. None of it makes any sense, no. Also, why didn't he finish the job? If it was a hit, why you would make sure everybody's girl. dead. And yeah. you would know when somebody's dead. Yeah. Why leave a girl, a little girl, mm. not dead? Yeah. Also, why do you not ration your bullets to make sure you have enough for everybody? Cool. Why shoot the cyclist seven times yeah. and then run out? That's total overkill. None of that makes any yeah, sense. No, no. It feels, half of it feels personal and then half of it feels like a yeah. hit. It oh. just, oh. Yeah, also, if it was a professional hit, if you are a professional killer, you make sure you know who you're going to kill. Yeah, L- i.e. the fact that they have two kids. Exactly. Mm. And obviously, the person who did the killing wasn't aware there was a second daughter. Yeah. As a professional, you make sure yeah. you know how many people yeah. you have to kill. So Definitely. it can't possibly be a professional. If it's not a professional, it makes even less sense. Because then you have no motivation, mm. you have no suspect, no. and you have no reason. No. Not, nothing makes sense. So to me, the, the target was the cyclist. Mm-hmm. Mainly because of how slow he moves. Yeah. And the geographical location. The fact that you couldn't predict what the family would be. Yeah. The fact that the guy didn't finish the job. Yeah. But the cyclist was very dead. Yeah. But again, we can't prove it. But that's not what the authorities are saying. The authorities are saying it's not the cyclist. They're still saying so. They're saying it is the family. They don't understand how and why, but they still think it's the family. Crazy. That's it, really. We don't know anything more. The case is still open. Mm. According to the new prosecutor um, who's following the case, there's three people full-time still working on the case. Okay, that's good. But at the moment, they're not going anywhere. They thought at the start of the year they had a solution. Mm -hmm. And she, it's a she, the prosecutor, had told to the press that they're very close to closing the case now. And we are now end of July, so six months later, and nothing happened. They released the guy they arrested again, the cyclist. I'll tell you what, the 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 biker. I have to say contemporary prosecutors are needing to keep their mouths shut a bit yeah. more. <laughs> yes. Stop getting, they need poker faces. Come on, don't, yeah. show, don't show everybody all of your cards all at once. But also don't presume you have a solution before mm. you actually know you have. Exactly. Because that, that makes you look stupid. Exactly. So yeah, it's still an open case. Mm. There's nothing. The BBC had a panorama episode on it in 2013 or 14. Okay. They are the ones who find out who taught the cyclist to go on that track. Okay. Um, but they were certain at the time that the the father-in-law the father or the hit. future father-in-law was the guy who ordered the hit. Yeah, to me that makes more sense. But 
I think ultimately the only thing and the last thing that you can say about this case is trying to make sense of senselessness. It's is senseless. It's yeah. not sensible. Exactly. Quite right. Well said. You finished off my final statement. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs>